Hey guys, this is Mark here, and we're uh, we're talking about the perfect portfolio with Jarrett Turner. And uh, Jarrett, maybe just tell us a little bit about your background, just so, so kind of see people people see everybody from every single background and level of financial literacy is is uh, do, you know learning from our program. Okay, so uh, my name is Jarrett Turner, like Mark said, and I have a small, actually a small family owned business that my dad passed on to me about five years ago. So um, previous to that, I worked for the government for about 15 years. And then, um, like I said, took over my dad's biggest small manufacturing business. So that's what I've been doing for the last five years. Awesome. Awesome. So, so a background working for the government, uh, of course, a business owner family. So you sort of had the idea of self-employed business ownership. Right. Um, what were you, the, the objective is to raise your financial IQ, teach you to fish and automate your income. Uh, what were you doing to raise your financial IQ before you came across this course? I think it was mostly random. Um, I'm a big reader, as you can tell in the back. So, um, I would go through, find a book, random book, say, hey, this looks good. Um, then I picked up a book called, um, I think, the, something about 0% taxes. And that kind of picked my interest in a couple of ways, but really just random. And if you go to any bookstore, you pick up any book, they're all going to be uh, pretty much the same as far as what they're teaching you and how. There wasn't a lot of new stuff. Or anything like that. Maybe some uh, Robert Kiyosaki, but frankly, I didn't like his writing style. So it was hard for me to get into that type of thing, but random, really random, nothing, nothing concrete. Hey, this is what I'm going to learn about. This is what I'm going to do. So sometimes I pick up a real estate investing book and get into that and say, I'm not interested in that. You know, something about trading, maybe interested in that. And then just very willy-nilly all over the place. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so, well, one of the things we talk about with everybody is there's, we, we identified seven levels of financial intelligence in the course. Where would you say, of course, one is being, one, number one is I don't understand anything. And then you, we went over the other ones. Where do, you, where do you feel you were when you came into the course? And where do you feel you are now? I definitely a solid three for sure. So I understood investing. I have a, Roth IRA and a traditional IRA. And, you know, I understand index funds and, you know, 401ks, basic, solid three. Okay, cool. And then where do you see, where did you, where did, did you increase? I it? I, oh yeah, definitely a solid five for sure. Solid five. So three to five. That's yeah. awesome. Five yeah. is, most people never get to five. <laughs> like, and that, yeah. when, if they're a five for a long time, they're usually pretty wealthy. So that's that's pretty awesome and that's we went up too so that's awesome very yeah cool. yeah very cool so um how do you see your your life changing in the next 24 months now that you went from level three to level five well i really it gave me direction so it simplified the process and clarified it and not realizing that i needed man i needed some direction and so the way that the course was structured really simplified you know you got the four the four quadrants and what those represent and really you go in which direction you feel more comfortable with if you want to take more risk you can do this but it really got me thinking outside of the box and gave me you know the IUL part was great and I've been able to my wife and I build that bank and then the crypto really getting into the crypto and 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 getting some ideas just from that and, and really like the M M one and especially leveraging other people's money. I, I'd heard of that, you know, you hear of that, but you kind of like, what is that? I know what that means, but I don't know what it means. But once you start doing that, you realize, Oh, okay. That's where you get your leverage from. So I can put money in and a savings account all I want, but if I'm not leveraging up, I'm just, you can see that you're just not going to get there. So just kind of that aha moment, the light bulb went up. Oh, okay. I understand. Good. So that's why you said you went level five. Level five is I right. don't, I don't invest into anything without using OPM, which is right. the number one rule, no OPM, no money. So you feel like that's right. a, that was the aha moment for you. Right. And so that's, and that you can, 
you you can le- leverage other people's money. It was just making that leap of, okay, this isn't, this is what people do. This is what wealthy people do. And then, and then seeing it for myself, realizing, oh, okay, I get it now. I understand now. Awesome. Any specific changes you're going to make in your life in the next 12 to 24 months? Yeah, I think so. And um, I'm talking about selling my business to get some cash out to be able to leverage. We, we've got older kids. I got a son that's graduated and then a daughter that will graduate this year and then another daughter that will graduate next year. So my wife and I thinking long term, you know, my business that I have now, I am definitely geographically set. I can't get up and leave and run my business from somewhere else. So this is going to give me financial freedom, but it's going to give me time freedom and location freedom, you know, so seeing, okay, that is a possibility. Awesome. Awesome. Well, good. So and now that you have this new, the aha moment, um, is there any specific people, groups, churches, organizations, charities that you want to help with that information you have? Yeah. I mean, I've got, I've got friends that, you know, that are doctors that are wealthier type friends, even my brother, you know, he's, he's done, he's done well for himself, but I definitely would be an advocate for this information and sharing that information with it. I mean, I'm, I'm already doing that. Sweet. Awesome. Well, we, we love to do that. Um, if they obviously want to get into the course, we're having our third beta test for the company currently right now it's starting orientation classes starting on this coming Tuesday, the 25th. So, you know, keep okay. in mind, you can always get yeah. some students in there. And other than that, um, you know, I just, I'm just, I'm so curious what people's lives and all the people we can help uh, now that we don't have to work anymore, right? We, we, right. Can, right. we can, we can get up every day and work on whatever we want on our own terms. And, um, you know, it's, it's just good helping good people do good things because good people right. do good things to money. Um, any specific charities you're going to donate back to or time or money or anything like that? Cause we know we're, we're a very charitable company. Yeah. I mean, um, one thing my wife and I talked about is doing more short-term missions trips because we're very yeah. involved with our local church. Yep. And of course, of course we support them, but, um, and we've got some other friends that are kind of in the missionary field, but being able to support them more, not just with our money, but with our time too because we're going to have, we're going to be able to do that. Good. So one thing I'm, I'm definitely getting into, and I have a huge presentation with a number of pastors this week is rather than donating money to a church, you can donate money, but it, it put it into a perfect portfolio and then sustain that church, just like Yale and those big pensions, right? The big endowments, university, the bigger endowments. Yeah. Work on creating that for a church. Don't give it. It's like, give them a, a, a income stream that can fund that church for the next hundred years. Yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. they're not requiring the tithing. And then the pastor, the congregation can be, you know, more financially independent. That was really the goal with the, on the charitable side and, and helping right. churches and charities. So, you know, keep in mind that, that, that I'm actually working with that with a number of large churches in Los Angeles. I have a big seminar this week on that. So, Oh, okay. You know, yeah. That's yeah, for sure. That's something to, you know, throw it up the flagpole. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, let's, uh, how about this? Let's just go. Uh, we got, we got a lot of work to do because we're going to create 1 million new millions. So I don't know if you're right. We got, we got a lot of work to do. Oh yeah, for sure. 